UserLeap raises $16 million to revolutionize the user research space. Stripe launches a product that turns banking services into API calls, and Gorgeous raises $25 million as Shopify's massive rising tide moves into customer support. That and more on this week's PLG123. Let's dive in. Tab one. Tab one is from TechCrunch and is about UserLeap's $16 million Series A. So here's what happened. UserLeap is a startup in the customer research space. The product today is used by individuals in product roles and user research roles and even analytics roles to get a better sense of the qualitative data about the product and user experience. And the company just announced its $16 million Series A led by Excel. So here's why this matters. The customer research space is a well-known and established market with very well-known leaders like Qualtrics and Medallia, SurveyMonkey, and many others. And UserLeap's core thesis is that these products are stuck in an outdated paradigm or an outdated era. And when you think about it, sending out a quarterly NPS survey just doesn't provide sufficient agility or granularity to be helpful to modern product teams that are built on continuous development and rapid experimentation. UserLeap looks to solve this problem by allowing product teams to run micro surveys in product targeted at specific users who have taken specific actions with specific questions. So you get a lot more specificity and a lot more speed. Or as TechCrunch puts it in the article, it says that the surveys are built right into the product targeted to a specific action or flow. UserLeap calls this new paradigm for research continuous research, which is a good fit with continuous development, which defines the modern software org today. And if you think about how companies like Amplitude have changed the quantitative analytics space by targeting specific users and events, and UserLeap has a parallel opportunity for qualitative research that's based off of user feedback. So here's what to keep your eye on going forward. How will the competitive landscape around the emerging continuous research space evolve? There have been moves by established players like SurveyMonkey to acquire companies that serve this use case. SurveyMonkey acquired a business called Usabilla, and other players that are adjacent like Pendo do have in-product survey functionality as well. And secondly, keep your eyes peeled for more in-product surveys that pop up in the products and the websites that you use. I expect to see this a lot more going forward. Tab two. Tab two is from TechCrunch and is about Stripe's new product announcement, Stripe Treasury. So here's what happened. Stripe launched a new product called Stripe Treasury. It allows software companies to provide banking services to their customers. All of those banking services are accessible through a simple API call. The article points to Shopify Balance as a prime example. So if you're a Shopify merchant, you can open a Shopify bank account through Shopify Balance, and all of that is powered by Stripe Treasury in the back end. The TechCrunch article points to this being a part of a larger trend, which is embedded finance, that you would embed financial services directly into third-party software products, which when you go over to stripe.com slash treasury, you see that messaging front and center here about embedding that functionality. Scrolling down, you see that Stripe refers to this as banking as a service. You can do things like new account openings, store funds, move money, pay bills, the list goes on. And other things like KYC and compliance are baked into the API call as well. Now, Stripe's not a bank and Shopify is not a bank, but there are banks in the background. As you see here, Stripe illustrates that you have Goldman Sachs and Citibank and Barclays and other blue chip brands in the background so you know that the trust and safety of a real bank is there. So here's why this matters. I think at this point, Stripe can be crowned the king of fintech, at least the king of fintech enablement. And so obviously Stripe started with payments and money transfer, but with products like Stripe Atlas and Stripe Issuing and now Stripe Treasury, we see the bigger push into more financial services and this broader banking as a service vision. So here's what to keep your eye on going forward. I think that the shifts that are happening in fintech right now, as there's an abstraction layer being built on top of actual banks that's accessible through an API, there are many parallels to what AWS did for data center infrastructure, which has made AWS certainly a huge company within Amazon but also has unleashed a huge amount of innovation from startups now that it's easier than ever to build software. So similarly, I think Stripe is gonna to continue to be a huge company, but it also is going to continue to unleash lots of creativity, lots of innovation, and the FinTech revolution, I think has only just begun. Tab three. 
Tab three is from TechCrunch and is about the new funding round from Gorgeous. So here's what happened. Gorgeous is an emerging leader in the customer support space, and the company has been showing strong growth with e-commerce and DTC brands. And Gorgeous says that with the e-commerce acceleration and boom that's happened in 2020, they've also seen acceleration in customer growth. And in response, they've raised a $25 million Series B that was led by Sapphire Ventures. Here's why this matters. Gorgeous's largest customer segment is Shopify merchants. We've talked talked about on the PLG123 before, the growth of Shopify and the growth of the Shopify ecosystem as well. We've pointed to examples of Klaviyo and other MarTech leaders that have gotten to hundreds of millions of dollars of revenue and billions of dollars in their valuations. And it seems that customer support is following in MarTech's footsteps within the Shopify ecosystem. And best I can tell, Gorgeous is the lead horse in that race today. To summarize the shift as succinctly as possible, I think it's a move from ticket-based systems to more user-based systems so that customers don't feel like a ticket, they feel like a person. And there's also an element of multi-channel communication. For a long time, customer support and help desk solutions were all about email. And now as things have moved to SMS and email and messaging channels and the list goes on, and so there's a need to bring all of those channels into a single feed to provide a unified customer experience. So here's what to keep your eye on going forward. While Gorgeous is doing well in the Shopify ecosystem, some of the traditional or legacy players are also doing well. Salesforce, Zendesk, HubSpot. I mean, just recently Zendesk announced getting to a billion dollars of revenue. So clearly they're still a going concern. And as we talked about last week on the PLG123, Facebook just acquired a customer for a billion dollars who competes with Gorgeous. And so it raises the question, is Gorgeous the next M&A target in the customer support and CRM space? Well, that does it for this week on the PLG 123. Make sure to follow me on LinkedIn for more daily PLG content and stay tuned for our weekly episode drops of the PLG 123 coming at you right here on LinkedIn. Hope you all are having a great week and take care.